welcome back to the learn risk for youtube channel and i'm going to discuss about the chip scale interconnect uh, in risk five so one of the major strength of uh, risk for architecture is that it's a scalable architecture so you can build from a small or an embedded computer to all the way to a supercomputer it's not uncommon to find more than one risk for core in isoc okay so so in risk why it has become it has become in inevitable for a protocol to handle a uh, memory sharing so in isoc where there are uh, multiple risk for cores and uh, you have a, a memory pool and that has to be uh, shared by these uh, different cores and the risk for spec uh, covers how to handle the interrupts that are generated within the core and outside the core uh, as we uh, saw in the applic standard however this uh, the protocol that is used to handle this uh, memory sharing is not uh, developed or it's not part of a risk for standard instead uh, it's developed by a company called uh, sci-fi and uh, sci-fi is so whoever knows or has uh, have heard about risk five would also know about sci-fi because a few of the founding members of sci-fi are part of uh, risk five as well and sci-fi is, is one of the major company who develops a uh, risk five course okay now let's see what is the styling protocol and uh, how it's uh, used to communicate between a risk five cores in ISOC. First of all, it's a free and open standard. And um, since a risk five is a free and open ISA, it's, it's, it's necessary that the uh, protocol to communicate uh, uh, to handle this memory sharing should also be free and open. And uh, tiling can uh, tiling supports other ISA as well, but I'm not sure if any other ISA that has adopted tiling. And uh, yeah, this is used to connect cores and uh, provides a physically addressed memory, and it's a message uh, message based protocol. Okay, and a lot more we will see soon. So tiling protocol uh, it has a uh, three different uh, conformance level to handle a uh, lightweight all the way up to the uh, full-fledged uh, cached system so the lowest is the uh, tiling uncached lightweight conformance level and uh, the second one is the tiling uh, uncached but still uh, it's heavyweight but still it's uncached and third one is the other uh, final uh, conformance level is the, uh, the highest conformance level is the uh, tiling C which is for a uh, cached system which supports caching okay and we will start with this i have planned this uh, tiling to be a multi-part session so this part one session i'm starting with this uh, tiling uncached lightweight so if you see here so these three conformance these are the three conformance levels and these are all the operations that can be performed in each of this conform conformance level. And uh, Tilink uh, UL or the uncached uh, lightweight just supports uh, read and write operations. And uh, you don't have to, we will look all this later in future, but for now uh, the scope is limited to read and write operation and UL. So before we uh, proceed, it's, it's important to know a few terminologies. So one is, uh, what is an operation in this uh, tile link? An operation is a change to an address range of data values or permissions or location in the memory hierarchy. And an agent or a tile link agent, uh, like any other agent, like an SNMP agent would uh, send and receive SNMP messages. Here, the tile link agent uh, is a component that sends and receives tile link messages. And channel, and uh, the closest analogy uh, channel would be like a pipe in the network. And it's a one-way communication between a master interface and slave interface. 
uh, carrying messages of homogeneous priority. We will look into the priority later, but uh, one differentiating factor between the channel or one unique characteristics of a channel entire link is that it, it's not a channel that can be uh, created on and demand. It's, it's like a, these channels are specific to the standard or there are dedicated channels for a particular um, message handling. So once we, as we know about this channel more, uh, you would know how, how this differs from a, from any other channel you would have uh, had before. And message is yeah, a set of control and data values sent over the particular channel. And link, which would be like a, a socket, a set of channels required to complete operations between two agents. So you need one channel because the channels are uh, unidirectional. So you need two channels to create a tile link link. So now let's see these uh, channels as I uh, slightly emphasized before the channels. If you see here in tile link protocol, uh, there are five different channels. So these channels are uh, dedicated for a purpose. For example, if you take channel A, then the direction is restricted only from master interface to the slave interface. And it can be used only to send request messages to an address. Okay. And uh, so channel A and D are the one that are used in the uncached lightweight. And if you see here channels B, C and E, those are used only for uh, the highest conformance level cached. Okay. And channel D, so B, C, E, these are all for uh, cached blocks. So that also we will, that I wouldn't be uh, discussing that in this first part. So channel D is the channel that is uh, used or uh, it's directed from the slave interface to the master interface. And that's the channel that would carry the messages or response messages from the address. Okay, so now if you if you go back, so in Duncash lightweight, so this is the only operation that is supported that is read and write. So it's like a get and put operation from a memory. So in tiling uncached, so this these are all the messages uh, that are supported in this uh, TL UL conformance level. And uh, these are all the total messages, so totally five messages. And as I mentioned before, so get is, is like a get the value from memory and put full data, put a partial data, the write operations, memory write operations. And this access act data and access act or the uh, response messages that can come from the slave interface. So this covers all the messages. And uh, the last column is list the response that a message might get. For example, in the master interface, uh, send a get, then the, the slave interface would send a access data back or access act data uh, back to the master interface. So that's why, so this gets a response from the slave interface and uh, as we saw before, any uh, message that goes from the master interface to the slave interface goes in the channel A. If you see here, get goes in channel A and all those uh, responses comes as part of the channel D. Okay. And this is, this picture is, is uh, more clear. So master interface uh, sends a put full data and you just, uh, and it receives the access acknowledged that because once it's written, the data is written and it gets an acknowledgement. That's it. There is no, the response don't have to have any data in it. Same for put partial data for the write operations. However, for the get operation, that should be a data in the response. Okay. So that's it uh, for now. And in the future session, I would cover, or not in the future, in the next uh, part two, I would cover uh, the list of signals those are used in, in channels because
these tiling protocol is to communicate between uh, between multiple uh, cores within an SOC, right? So these are so the tiling uh, protocol will be uh, implemented in hardware. So if you if you use Verilog and BHTL, then you should know. Um, to implement this then what are all the signals they don't call that as a, a wires so how do you uh, generate this class a signals so what are all the signals that are used by a uh, channel a to send those messages so that would be the um, that would be the one that i'll be covering in the part two session in the near future okay thank you